Can't imagine why John still believes in such foolery. The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. Your room is upstairs, sir. Number 221. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's Patch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. Okay, time to check if John found us a nice table for the evening. If seafood's not to your taste, 
Everyone loves Benedict's batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. Sherry, I'm over here with my new ursine companion. Cordon is even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, oh, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well, then, you can deliver it to him as well. Deliver it to him? <laughs> then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? Oh, stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. But all right. Let me take a look. No matter how long you stare at the stick, it's not going to walk itself to its owner. Your room is upstairs, sir. Number 221. me about the cane. I was with you the whole time. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk.
Backers would find this place incredibly dull, don't you think? A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow, perhaps the fielding family or meadows, or crazy. The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. The cane is made of ebony, it's worn uncared for, and bears the scars of numerous hits. This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. All right, I hope you noted down your observations in your casebook. But how are you going to find this nobleman? The cane itself is not enough. I may have to ask other guests if they saw who was here. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk. Help me, please. Friend, you're lucky there is something I know about this. Well, even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find the cane's owner on your first try. <laughs> and would you be confident enough to bet on it, my friend? Why not? Let's see how good you really are. Not that one, huh? You lost the bet, Sherry, but don't let that stop your search for the Navy officer. Excuse me, just one question. 
I can't help you with that, sir. Do you know anything about this? Ex excuse me? What? I'm not sure I know. You obviously haven't thought this all through. Or are you just annoying these people on purpose? Could you help me? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. Hey, Sherry, don't we now have the perfect excuse to visit the seance? I'm just going to give the cane to its owner. You will not I didn't see me the owner, Sherry, so I can't help you find him. Come on, if you hurry, perhaps we'll see the ghost. This hotel, this island, it's full of thieves! First my cane, now the diamond. Take your hands off me! Do you even know who I am? Hey, boy! That's my cane! I get that a lot. It's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom made! A joke. A joke. It was left at my table in the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. Well, I'll be... It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered true penny these days. What a gentleman. But I must ask, how did you know I was the rightful owner? Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything I needed to know. I was after a strong middle-aged man with a keen interest in adventure, noble blood, and affection for strong drink. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol, Lord Craven. Marvelous. Simply marvelous. That's me, Lord Andrew Craven. You are the real medium. You hear that, Emma? Well, you found my cane. Perhaps you can locate my diamond, too. Yes, you should do it. It will be child's play for you, Mr... Holmes. And if a child can do it, then I'm sure the local police can suffice. The police? Why bother? I know this Harlequin stole it. The only question is, where is it hidden? Fine. Give me my stick and I'll resolve the matter myself. This thief almost confessed after a single punch. Hmm. I suspect a beating may result in answers of questionable veracity. Fine. I shall spare you and he the trouble if you first answer me this. How does a priceless diamond become the subject of a seance? It is an unusual accoutrement. Emma wished to speak with its former owners. My grandfather told us it belonged to a Rajah, an Indian king. 
So you were summoning long-dead Indian royalty and, pray tell, you were expecting him to converse in English? To be frank, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts. But Emma was fascinated by the idea of meeting a real king, even a dead one. Well, a crown is a crown. Can you describe the stone itself? A yellow diamond, not less than a hundred carats, and perfectly egg-shaped. There is not another like it. You insist the medium robbed you during the seance. But what occurred, exactly? Ah! It was a dirty trick. We were sitting here in the dark, chanting and holding hands, as expected. Then something began to appear from the medium, like a, a cloud or a bubble. The swindler called it ectoplasm. Ah, oh, yes. Common in the spiritualist trade, and quite the spectacle. Indeed. Perhaps too much. My beloved Emma screamed in horror, and I stood to defend her, attacking that cursed ghost. How brave. But my hand hit nothing. The medium jumped away from me, and Emma fainted. I lit the candle, and the diamond was gone. Stay here, and don't touch anything. I'm going to investigate further. Don't fret, I'll be keeping a close eye on this thief. Oh, I love the ambiance. Nice and creepy. This hefty chair has nearly broken after hitting the wall. Could one man even lift it? What happened here? I don't know. The ghost. I summoned it as usual, but then it all went wrong. The lady screamed and pointed at Lord Craven. And there was a shadow. Such a mystical force. It terrified the lady. And it must have taken the diamond. Who else could have? Do you feel the presence of any supernatural entities at the moment? Are you joking, sir? My nose is broken, this maniac wants to kill me, and you're asking about the spirits? I suppose this can wait. I will investigate, and the culprit will be identified. But this stubborn brute Lord Craven blames me right now. As if I could do something like that. Uh, perhaps you can reason with him? Please? Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. She's barely conscious. A feebleness of women. Really, Sherry? Poor thing. Find the stone, Mr. Holmes, and quickly. Was this covered on purpose? Of course. It is very dangerous to leave a mirror exposed during a seance. The spirits may become enraged. Or someone may notice the trick they should not see. I wonder what this mirror could have witnessed. I wonder what this mirror could have witnessed. Oh, I love the ambiance. Nice and creepy. This painting looks authentic, but it's just a talented imitation. With skills like that, this biblical lady could get a job in Scotland Yard. Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. After colliding with the wall, this chair is all but in pieces.
The diamond was placed on the table, so that this must be the ectoplasm. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. Ectoplasm? The ghost was here, Sherry. This must be the ectoplasm. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. This brooch is old and cheap, but the moth design has its charms. This must be the ectoplasm. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. Half a glass of Balblair scotch and the remains of a poor Laranaga cigar. What else does a gentleman need? This must be the ectoplasm. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. There are light traces of rouge on the edge of this wine glass. Ah, seems like you're ready to delve into your mind palace, Sherry. I'm sure you'll make some good deductions. It seems there may have been an unexpected visitor outside the window. Ah, oh, I hope it was the ghost of the Raja.
This looks recent. A shoe with a broken heel will surely leave scratches. All right, John. Do you think a ghost could leave this footprint? I'm reserving judgment. Use your keen eye to follow the trail. Ghost hunting? This case gets more exciting by the minute. Most more. All the maids in the hotel wear this exact shoe. Size four with a broken heel. So definitely not the ghost of a Raja. This Our witness was a nosy show. maid. Hmm. Find your princess. Searching the entire hotel could be difficult. Perhaps the other maids can help us find her. Can I ask you a question? Oh, yes. I can tell you everything, sir. Finally, there you are. One would think a maid would be easy to find in this place. I, I, I'm sorry, sir. Do you need more towers? No, no. You are the maid who saw the ghost in the seance room, yes? How did you know? Simple. You changed shoes after breaking a heel while fleeing the scene. I'm sorry, sir, but if I may ask, who are you? I'm a novelist documenting the supernatural and those who witness it now. Should you take a starring role in the tale, I will need your name. Oh, my. A book? And you want to include me? I'm Lucia. Lucia Saleta. Something went wrong during the seance, Lucia, but no one will tell me what happened. You would be a valuable interview if you were there. I was. And I saw everything with my own eyes. Describe what happened during the seance. Um, a lady and two gentlemen were sitting at a table, touching their hands to something. The medium started to whisper and, and chant. 
and a ghost appeared. A ghost? You're confident? Hmm? It was unearthly, sir. It grew from the medium's chest. A glowing cloud or a bubble. I pressed closer against the window to see better. And the lady saw you? How did you? Yes. She screamed and pointed, so I hurried to escape, and I broke my heel. But I did see the ghost. A sickly, evil thing. And that's all you can tell me? Did you see any of what happened next? <laughs> the, the medium, Mr. Galici. He was doing something with the ghost. He grabbed at it like he was trying to catch it. <laughs> and then I ran. I suppose I should be grateful you endured these horrors for such a long time. All right. I have your account memorized. Good day. You lied to the poor girl, Sherry. What a tease. She'll dream about being a character of that book. Surely a pleasant dream is better than no dream at all, John. Oh, let's get back to the crime scene. I always love... Oh, let's get back to the crime scene. I always love seeing you explain simple things to simpletons.